everyone, welcome back to the Land of Flying Cars, also known as Toto Santos. This is episode number 16. So for the next four episodes, we're going to start filling in some of the downtown area that we made last episode. So what we end up making this episode is a small modern neighborhood with a couple of high rises, some shops, a little mixture of commercial and residential. And we're starting off just by making this little light rail line and extending that out along the north side of this downtown peninsula. Uh, we're not going into really any detail any further than just this little section, uh, but we do draw it out and just get that lined up. And of course, we're most likely going to go in and detail those in future episodes. But I just wanted to show you kind of what I'm thinking for the light rail as far as downtown is concerned. And next episode is really going to be a counterpart to this one uh, because I don't know if you noticed before, but there's a big stadium asset right next to the area that we're building this episode. And next time we're going to go in and build a whole stadium district. So this is all within the area of the stadium. This is kind of one neighborhood that we're splitting over two episodes. So really quickly with this light rail line, I wanted to run it along the avenue pretty closely, kind of like it's all in the same right of way or something like that. And I'm thinking in a later episode, we'll probably make it into like one long, uh, maybe at a pedestrian promenade. I don't know if maybe we'll have a beach there. In real life, there's like industrial stuff and uh, a port area. Uh, we're not going to do that right here. We're going to do that somewhere else. Uh, so we'll probably do something a little more walkable and a little more commercial. I know it's a little bit of a longer episode again, but I really hope that you'll stay with me the whole way because at the end we have what probably are my favorite cinematics so far in the series. Uh, I really like them and I hope that you will too. All right, let's get started with this build. So now we're back at the main area that we're focusing on this episode, which is just this little area kind of between the freeway and the curve of the downtown avenue there that we made last episode. And we're starting off by making a little bit of uh, a more industrial, maybe a little bit of an older area. This first building is a road maintenance building that, you know, sends out all the road maintenance vehicles. Uh, and here I was thinking it would probably be like the main office of the Transportation Administration or the Highway Administration for the region. And the theme of this episode, which you can see here, we're filling in this area with this uh, dirt texture. I wanted it to look like this has been slowly transitioning from a more uh, industrial uh, style in the past uh, to a commercial and residential focused area. And that really acts as a mirror for the uh, main portion of the build, which is going to come later in the episode where we build uh, basically that sort of residential and commercial area with some high rises and shops and that sort of thing. So it's kind of like this area is moving out from the downtown, gentrifying a bit and becoming more modern and a little more wealthy. But before we get to that, we're going to be building this little bit of a park and a garden area. Uh, you saw me build the park with just a little park shelter and a playground. And now I really just wanted this to be a buffer between the big highway interchange and intersection there and the what's eventually going to be the residential area. So I thought this would be kind of a cool place to have a public garden and just try to make the uh, the land of concrete there a little more tolerable to the poor Sims who have to live right next to it. So we have this public garden where they're growing flowers and ferns and just mostly doing it for uh, the activity and the you know the satisfaction of doing that as opposed to actually producing anything. Although in a way they are kind of producing like a nice public green space. So that's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to place some details now. I'll let you watch that and I'll be back in just a minute so we can fill in some more of these gaps.
Welcome back. So to fill in all these gaps right next to the freeway entrance, I wanted to go with the theme that a lot of this has been undergoing this transition from industrial into more modern uses. So I figured like these tiny little gaps right next to all this infrastructure probably wouldn't be very desirable or usable for zoning for commercial or residential. So a lot of them end up being little parks, green spaces, uh, landscaped areas. We do a little bit of a parking lot off screen with some cool solar parking lot assets. So here we're just expanding that hedge and tree network so that we can kind of hide the off ramp there from all these people that are entering the financial district. And by the way, I have actually gone back and replaced all these vanilla highway pillars with some nicer higher res ones from the workshop so that's pretty cool and we're squeezing in a starbucks underneath the metro line here which i imagine would be kind of annoying to sit out there on the patio and try to relax and drink a coffee but whatever it's actually sort of inspired by a coffee shop i used to go to that was on a busy road um but nonetheless i would kind of enjoy sitting there and watching all the traffic go by and having a coffee so this is sort of just a nice little memory that I'm kind of including here. And these awesome plaster wall network assets. Uh, I've been using those quite a bit over the city. I think they're great and they seem to really fit the themes as opposed to using a ton of wooden fences, which is what I'd often do with this sort of thing. And we just end up covering it up with a hedge anyway. So <laughs> that's pretty much a moot point. And I'm fencing off this little rectangle here. I figured that the city would need some areas to like stage equipment and um, vehicles in order to use them for maintenance on the metro line. So this is just kind of one of those areas and we have a couple of them throughout the city. But I really like this uh, tile decal that I end up using. It's close enough to the pavement texture to not look too out of place, but it's different enough that it kind of breaks up just the pure pavement texture that you get with Surface Painter. Uh, so. That's a, that's a nice decal that I use quite a bit. And here's what I'm talking about. I'm not sure why they would have a bulldozer in there. <laughs> that seems to just be the first thing that came to mind, but uh, whatever. Now we're sliding a little bit of parking here behind the coffee shop, uh, right next to that light rail station there. And we're also putting down some posts here to protect all these pedestrians because this ends up being a pretty pedestrian heavy area. There's an office park eventually and this main train station and light rail station, this sort of rail hub. And of course it's just the entrance to the financial district so there ends up being a lot of pedestrian traffic and we just want to keep them safe from all these crazy drivers that are zooming around. And now we're just really quickly decorating this light rail station. It's really simple. Most of the interesting part of this rail hub is going to be the downtown train station, which we're going to do this episode. And you may be wondering how the cars are supposed to actually get from the street into the parking lot, and the answer is that they can't, but the game lets them do it anyway. And I'm fine with that. And we're laying just a few roads to fill out this area and make some more manageable blocks. And now we put down this kind of retaining wall to deal with the slope here between the stadium, uh, which I did place off screen, but we're gonna go way more into detail into that next episode. But anyway, we put this retaining wall here and have these roads uh, kind of go under the tram depot there as a tunnel. I thought that was kind of cool. It was really the only place the road could fit. So I thought I'd uh, just make it into kind of a weird, interesting, urban sort of thing that you, you sometimes see things like that. I don't know, but I like it. I, I think it turns out once we put some more details on it, I, I think it turns out to be a, kind of a cool spot. All right, now we're moving on to that train station that I mentioned before, and I've been using these uh, Japanese parking lot assets, uh, which are really nice. They have these great fence assets built in and I've been also been just using those fence assets all over the city they look great uh, but I'm just using those to give some variety to the parking lots uh, so that I have more than just one or two uh, ploppable parking lots of course we sometimes use the parking lot roads as well and we have these couple of little shops here down at the base and this nice little corner park where I figured uh, people who are need to wait quite a while for a train or something could hang out there I was really just trying to break up the 
different sort of things at the ground level as opposed to just having pure concrete or a big parking lot or a big commercial area uh, just to make it give a little bit of variety. And you can see there just a second ago I used some more of those Japanese fences which were super cool. They have that sort of plaster stucco look uh, in addition to having some wooden bits sticking up and we get some more bollards all around the train station again to protect the people from these insane drivers uh, the cars end up taking some really weird paths when you have all these giant parking lots and hidden roads and stuff i mean cars just go everywhere they don't even stay on the roads but that's beside the point so now we're going to get on to doing just some little pieces of landscaping around the base of the train station I wanted to have these grass curbs sticking out just to blend this asset by itself looks amazing but I just kind of wanted to blend it into the environment a little bit better so it looks more like a, a thing that's actually been designed and placed into this environment rather than just a giant building plopped down onto a big slab of concrete which definitely works sometimes for like dense urban areas but uh, I figured since this is the highest traffic train station out of our grand total of three at the moment uh, that it would deserve a little bit more landscaping and attention to how it fits into this area. By the way, these curb network assets are so great. They just really help you break up the monotonous concrete and that sort of texture. Uh, I'm trying not to get too fiddly with that sort of thing because if I keep doing that over and over again, then we're never going to make any progress in this city. So we definitely keep doing small areas like that, but the city as a whole is going to be quite a bit less detailed than that. Uh, but we're still going to try to fill every gap and make everything look natural like it, like it fits in where it should. So hopefully we'll be able to keep up that level of detail in some areas while still actually being able to build a big city. All right, anyway, so now we're detailing this tram depot and I added in that office building there. I'm imagining that's like the administration building for the operators of the train system, or at least the metro system. And we have this little parking lot here. Again, it's that Japanese parking lot asset, uh, which I highly recommend you download if you're looking for a, a nicely put together, simple uh, urban parking lot asset. And we add in this sky bridge or pedestrian walkway across from the parking garage and that's something we're going to keep doing in the downtown area uh, quite a few times because I just think that's a really cool asset and that's one detail about cities that I really like is uh, pedestrian bridges going across places uh, so we do that a few times with this asset and with some other assets and I don't use them in this episode actually, but there's a great set of like pedestrian elevators that are really detailed and they look great and you can kind of clip them into the pedestrian walkway so that it looks like there's a big elevator going all the way up the building. And then there's the pedestrian crossing. And then on the other side, you can do the same thing with the elevator. Uh, but again, that's not in this episode. That's in a later one where we start doing that. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> And now we're just clipping this uh, pedestrian walkway and just so we can see where it goes, we're going to replace this uh, yeah, right now with an invisible pedestrian walkway. And uh, people don't really use it, <laughs> so it didn't quite work as I hoped, even with some uh, different event generators on it, but uh, that's not too big of a deal, I don't think. It's mostly there just to bridge that gap in the slope. Okay, so I'm going to start filling in some of these gaps and decorating this big pedestrian walkway that is apparently not functional. I'll play some music and see you on the other side of the segment. Enjoy!
Welcome back. Oh, oops. Welcome back for real this time. We're starting off with some of these smaller buildings, but overall I wanted to go with this uh, higher density, more modern look. Uh, pretty simple. And this is just again going with the sort of replacing this old industrial area with some more modern uh, high rises and like I said, higher density. And we do a little bit of commercial in a minute once we finish decorating these gaps. And I'm just overloading this area with trees, which is a little ridiculous, but uh, it was fun at the time, so who cares? And now we're moving on to what I feel is the main focus of this episode, even though it really only takes up a couple minutes of the video. Uh, we're building this condo or apartment complex, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have the, the tall asset over on the right. And then we have the smaller, sort of more modern looking one on the left there. And I just figured this would be kind of like the focal point of whatever development pitch had been given for this. this it's a nice building in a, an up and coming area right near the stadium, right near downtown. This would probably draw a lot of new people into the urban core area. So that's the idea I had when I was building this. And we have this little uh, supermarket here, which is kind of cool. I have some parking in along the right there. Uh, since there's not really a big space for a parking lot at this particular uh, building. And then we have this little balloon guy on the corner selling balloons. And that you can see that one shopping cart there. Someone didn't push it back all the way. And now there's no room for any other shopping carts. And that seems to be pretty realistic as far as I can tell. And I wanted to use these poppable surface decals, which I, or not decals, uh, props. Uh, which I feel like I don't use enough because they look really great and it's just another way to break up the uh, pavement texture that's so ubiquitous in this game. And since I figured this is such like a, you know, nice, little bit more expensive building, they'd have their own fenced off parking lot uh, just for tenants. And then we put these tile decals around the whole thing. I just thought they'd lined up nicely with this little outdoor patio area. I thought there might even be a cafe or something open to the public in the bottom of this building, uh, getting some mixed use into it, which is always cool for urban areas. And we just run that all around this whole thing like it really is one development. Uh, I'm not sure how realistic it is that they'd make one really tall building and then one shorter one. Uh, it seems like they'd want to maximize the amount of space and thus the amount of money they can bring in from it but uh, again I don't really know how these things work so I'm kind of winging it at this point and then someone left their shopping cart there that's just rude and we put down some park people generators just because I figured it's a you know it's a nicer more modern place with some public use areas at the bottom so there it might be kind of a hangout for some people I guess they just hang out in front of buildings I don't know and now we're just going to quickly put on the finishing touches to this area with these uh, little cool chain fence assets, I guess, and have some, this just looked a little bare for like a more modern development. So put some planters there with some young trees just to kind of signify that they've uh, been put there recently. You know, eventually those will be nice, big, leafy trees. And now we're starting off on this kind of tiered planter area, I suppose. There was a pretty steep slope here that I did want to work with, and I didn't want to hide it. I wanted to show it off more. So we do some interesting things with that. So I'm going to let you watch this part of the build, and I'll be back in just a minute. Enjoy. <music>
welcome back. We're almost to the end of the episode. Uh, so really quickly, I just wanted to say that reading all your comments is extremely motivating to me, and it just makes me very happy to know that you all are enjoying this build and these episodes. Uh, so if you guys are having fun, then I'm having fun. And I'll be honest, I probably would have lost interest in the city a long time ago if I didn't have all you guys watching and commenting. Uh, so thank you very much, especially if you made it all the way through this episode. There's a lot more coming. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Toto Santos, and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Adios.